Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. The big news for today is that the Defence Ministry has signed a contract with the PSU, that is a Bharat Dynamics Limited, for supply of Astra Mark I missile specifically aimed at strengthening our air attack capabilities. In this particular big news discussion, we will look deeper into what exactly are the strengths of this Astra Mark I missile. Why was there a need for this missile to be developed indigenously and how would it strengthen our military overall? Now let's begin. As I said, the reason why this is in the news and the reason why we are discussing is because the Ministry of Defence has signed a contract with a public sector enterprise called Bharat Dynamics Limited, it is the BDL, for the supply of Astra Mark I. The total contract is worth 2,971 crore rupees. This particular missile will be used in the fighter jets of the Indian Air Force and the Indian Navy. The important part is that this missile is beyond visual range. Beyond visual range missile means that you can use this missile even when the enemy plane is not in near sight. You can actually program it with the use of radar and you can send the missile so that you are also at a safe distance on the enemy aircraft. That is why this technology is extremely important and is being adopted by many countries around the world. Also remember, the Astra missile is an air-to-air -air missile. So it will mainly be used by the Air Force to attack the Air Force of the other nation. Now there are a lot of different variants of Astra. The one that we are talking about right now is a Mark I variant. This variant was actually completed in 2017. There have been multiple tests done of this variant on different aircrafts of the Indian Air Force to ensure that it is working properly. However, there are other variants also of higher ranges that are in work. So the Mark I variant that we have, for which the contract has just been signed, has a range of 110 kilometers. The Mark II variant, which is still in the development stage, has a range of 150 kilometers, while the Mark III variant would have an even longer range as compared to the first two variants. Now do remember, Although this agreement has been signed with BDL, Bharat Dynamics Limited, that doesn't mean that this is the company that has developed or designed it. This missile has originally been developed and designed by the DRDO. They are the ones who transferred the technology to BDL to undertake its production on a larger scale. That is what usually happens. DRDO is an organization that does research and development. They are not into large scale production of these kind of missiles. Once they do the research, once they make the prototype and they prove that it is working properly, then they transfer the technology to a public sector enterprise as per the government's wishes. And that is when the large scale production takes place. So this beyond visual range missile that we have, Astr will mostly be used by an airborne asset that is usually the fighter jets that we have to destroy another airborne target. As we just discussed, the development of this particular project had started early on in the 2000s itself. As you can see here, developing such a missile, especially from the ground up, takes a lot of time. It is usually a decade or more than a decade that this particular kind of technology can actually translate from an idea on the ground to a weapon that can be used in a real war-like situation. Now, this particular contract will be under by Indian IDDM category. Now, whenever any defense procurement takes place in the country, there are different categories of contract. This particular contract is called the Indian IDDM. Here, IDDM stands for Indigenously Designed, Developed and Manufactured. So, as the name suggests, this technology has been designed in India developed in India and it will be manufactured in India itself. As per this contract, minimum of 50% indigenous content will be used on the basis of cost. So whatever content that is required in the manufacturing of this missile, at least half of it would be based out of India itself. The Ministry of Defense also said that these kind of projects will create a lot of employment opportunities, especially for the MSMEs who are working in the aerospace technology. In the coming 25 years, we see a lot more jobs and a lot more work being done by such MSMEs who are working in this particular field. More than 50 private and public companies, including the IAF, the Hindustan Analytics Limited, etc., have contributed and given inputs so that this final version of the Astra Mark I could actually come into being. Now, these are the different types of contracts that we have when we talk about defense procurement. 
as you can see the first one is by IDDM for this the requirement is that the design should be indigenous and the content should be at least 50% of Indian origin then the other category is by Indian in which the indigenous design should be more than or equal to 50% otherwise if the design is not indigenous then at least the components that are being used in this particular missile should be 60% or more of Indian origin so that is a second category Similarly, we have the third category buy and make Indian, then we have the buy global manufacture in India and then we have the buy global. These are the different type of categories that we have when we talk about defense procurement contracts that are usually signed by the Ministry of Defense in India. Now, this particular missile is actually great news for the Indian military in the long run and there are multiple reasons for that. The IAF that is the Indian Air Force specifically has been dependent on foreign sources, foreign missiles and foreign aircrafts ever since India had become independent. Astra now marks a great development in this regard because it is technologically and economically far superior to many of the important missiles that we actually used to get from other nations across the world. The Astra missile can travel at speeds more than four times that of the sound, that is 4 Mach, and can reach a maximum altitude of 20 kilometers, which is extremely effective for air combat if the time comes. The missile will be fully integrated to be used on Sukhoi 30s and will also be integrated for other aircraft that are used in large numbers by the Indian Air Force including the light combat aircraft that is Tejas. Now there is a very significant reason why this particular missile actually is required by the Indian Air Force. Let's go back to 2019. In February 2019, there was a dogfight between the Indian Air Force and the Pakistan Air Force as you would remember. That is when the Indian Sukhoi 30s became the targets of several Amram that is advanced medium range air to air missile from Pakistan side that were being used on Pakistan's F-16s. Now the good part for India was that our Sukhois were unharmed because Sukhois are very well known for their maneuverability and also the Indian fighter pilots are extremely well trained on Sukhois and they were able to escape any of those attacks. Also, we had very powerful Israeli jammers that were working on our side which ensured that we could discharge these missiles. However, this prompted the Indian government and the Indian side to think more about our own missile capability, specifically the beyond visual range missiles. Although this project of Astra had been in development stage for a long time, but it was after that that it was decided that we should expedite the project even further and make sure that this could be used very well on the Sukhoi 30s. Also, because the Sukhoi 30s usually use a Russian made R-77 missiles which were found to be inferior as compared to the Amram missiles of Pakistan and that is why the Astra missiles now are expected to give the edge to the Indian Air Force that we had required for a long time. This is all that you needed to know about the Astra missile Mark 1 which will shortly become a part of the Indian Air Force in the upcoming battles. Thank you so much for watching the big news.